Welcome into the Real Domino Pod, everybody. This is episode two. Episode one was a great success uh, in terms of something I've been trying to get off the ground for a long time. I couldn't be more excited about what we have in store for the future, and that includes the guy I'm sitting with right now. He is a seven-time, I believe I have this right, American Crossword Puzzle Champion, and more importantly, he is quite a good buddy we've been drunk in at least four or five different cities together right at, at least four that i can remember yeah he's uh he he is tyler henman tyler what is up my friend just living the dream chris yeah. how are you one day at a time man i'm doing the same it has been a great start to the year i really can't complain <laughs> as my buddy jerome says from episode one i'm always good because hey somebody has it worse off and they'd switch places with us in a heartbeat you know yep that's true um okay so this actually is fairly fresh because the American crossword puzzle tournament just happened, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the crossword tournament was, uh, last weekend, uh, in beautiful Stamford, Connecticut, uh, just outside uh, New York city. Right. Uh, you may also know it as the, uh, taping place of such illustrious programs as, uh, Maury Povich and Jerry Springer. Right. And um, WWE headquarters. Yeah. 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 That's right. Yeah. On the, on the train out of the city. I, I, I noticed, uh, noticed that. Right. Um, I believe I took a trip there once and it was about three in the morning. I made sure to go by headquarters and just get a glimpse of a light, which I assume was the WWB sign. I have no idea. It might have been a random building, but we're going to pretend I was there. It's a good story. Yeah, great. We're going, we're <laughs> killing it right now. All right, go on. Uh, yeah. So, um, kind of a crash course in how, uh, how the tournament works. Um, I mean, at least the competition portion of it. Uh, Saturday is when the competition. Uh, part of it really starts. Uh, you do three puzzles in the morning, then uh, you know go to lunch, and then uh, three puzzles in the afternoon, and then um, on Sunday there's uh, another kind of Sunday size large puzzle that everyone does. This is all this is all points based. There's not uh, there's not any elimination at any point uh, over the seven puzzles, um, and then uh, the top three players in the A, B, and C divisions uh, go up on stage and uh, solve the final uh, puzzle, which is a Difficult, just uh, kind of Friday or Saturday style New York Times, very wide open grid, no theme. Uh, and they just uh, kind of solve this puzzle on whiteboards in front of everyone, and that determines uh, determines the winners. Final, uh, final puzzle, puzzle, the final puzzle. Uh, you've made the, the final finals. puzzle. <laughs> you've made the finals quite a bit, yes. Yeah, I think I think I may I think I've tied the record now for most final appearances, which is um, how many? Fourteen, I think. That's impressive. In how many years you've been you've been doing this a while? obviously uh i've been doing this since uh 2001 was my first year did not oh did not come close to winning that year of course no. well you uh, were about what five years old at that point though like, yeah yeah roughly yeah, yeah. <laughs> um then in 03 uh 02 i had to miss I, cu I couldn't make it to that one uh 03 i went back and that was the year i actually won the b division so one of the lower divisions and those divisions are determined by how well you've done in previous tournaments basically so right. rookies come in at c and then, you know, rise up or fall back, depending on how they do in the standings. It just kind of carries back a certain number of years for uh, what uh, what division you're in. So I want to get we'll, we'll cover the crossword puzzle tournament here uh, in, in quite in great detail here in a bit. But I want to talk about how we met. If you can see behind me, I've got the background of the set that we were on on a television show called Superhuman. Now, nice we film. We filmed this in 2016. It was aired on Fox Network in 2017. I have so much to say about Superhuman in general, but I want to ask you, because we've, we've honestly, we've never, as much as we've hung out, hung out, we've not talked about this very much. What are your initial memories of a couple of things? One, the audition process, but then actually getting to LA and seeing the stuff in front of you. Um, I don't remember that much about the audition process. I remember there was a, there was a lot of back and forth about um, what my challenge would actually be. Right. You just kind of solving a crossword isn't, Super telegenic. You mean that's not ratings gold? Come it's on. Not, it's not. I mean, let's face it. wasn't ratings gold anyway. Let's be honest. Here. Let's be honest with no, ourselves. Yeah, here. that was a bad segue, actually. Um, it, it was. It was. It was. Uh, it, it didn't exactly set the world on fire. Hey, but we've got another season coming out. No, no, you don't. You no, do you don't. Yeah, you I, I, I believe we're still waiting on that next season. <laughs> exactly. Um, they, actually, no, they actually asked me back for season two as like a, one of the experts on the panel. There's no way that's, that's correct. not true at all. Okay, no, <laughs> it's just completely. that's an impossibility. It's not true. Could you imagine though? We yeah, go me from... next to Mike Tyson and Christine. Yeah, that's Liliana, we, we've, a, we've replaced. Well, who do we replace though? Do we replace Mike Tyson with Tyler Hinman? Is that how that I, would work? I wouldn't feel good about my chances of living if that happened. Uh oh. 
<laughs> that escalated quickly. Um, but we get to LA. My my I remember getting picked up from the airports and I'm in the car with Nelson Dellis, who yep. hopefully we can get on here very soon. Yeah. My, a, my a, friend from middle school, would you believe it if you didn't know that? You know, that is that was an amazing story. Absolutely okay, we'll, wild, we'll get yeah. we'll get to that in a second because I want to talk about how you grew up. But I'm in the car with him. I don't know who Nelson is, by the way, at the time. Mm-hmm. We start talking, very nice guy. I find out he's a multi-time USA memory champion. And mm-hmm. I'm sitting there like, oh, I can do a cool little trick with dominoes. Like, I'm sitting there like, who else is going to be? Like, what have I gotten myself into? I'm going to embarrass myself on national television, which turns out I kind of did. No, you um, didn't. You got yeah, it right. Well, whatever. Uh, yeah. Wouldn't that be something if it was all, that's right, 535. All right, we're just going to leave that one alone. Hashtag 535. <laughs> and move on. No, Nelson, nice guy. We met so many great people on the show. But yeah, I remember did. getting there, and we're supposed to be there for something like eight to ten days. It was and a while. Yeah, but I'm sitting there like the challenge isn't that I'm not gonna say it's not that difficult, but it's not something that we need to do for that long. So I was a little bit shocked at the level to which this was going. Yeah. Um, but it ended up just being a summer filler show, right? It pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. That's that, that's that's the size of it. I want to give a couple of shout outs to people on, but I don't know if they'll want their name mentioned. Is there anyone you want to shout out from the show? Uh I mean, the, the other the other guy who uh, was not on our episode, of course, because they probably wouldn't put existing acquaintances uh, in the same episode. But a uh, buddy of mine, uh, Dave Millar, who does uh, who's a right. puzzle maker, makes a lot of good logic puzzles. Um, Very good guy. Yeah, uh, he was on. A, he did a challenge on another episode that involved basically, he basically memorized a maze and then guided uh, the host Cal Penn through it uh, blindfolded. Well, and to be fair, though, I mean, your challenge wasn't simply let's go up here and saw. I mean, there were multiple elements to this puzzle and they I did. Yeah. Huh. What do you mean? Huh? Come on. It was. Yeah. I mean, they. they, I love that. Okay, hang on. I'm sorry. Put yourself in the mind of a regular viewer. Right. It's not just a regular puzzle. Yes, it might be to you. But if we're looking at that on screen, no, no casual viewer is going to be able to solve that sort of puzzle. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they would. I think they would eventually. But um, yeah. But if you didn't see it and, you know, judging by the ratings, you didn't. Uh. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um so what i had to do was uh it was, there was a kind of puzzle where you're given basically imagine a five by five grid with the corners cut out so kind of three five letter words crossing three five letter words and the letters around like the 12 letters around the side three on each side were given to me and then i had a nine letter word and i had to put the letters of the nine letter word into the center three by three so that words read the three got the three five letter words across and the three going down um except um, that's that's how like the puzzle like normally works if you see it in a publication or something. Um, so what they did for me was they had five of those and then five nine letter words, and I did not know I I had to do the work of matching up the uh, nine letter words to the grids myself. Uh, so that was uh, that was a little tricky. I got a couple quickly, and there were a couple of red herrings that hung me up. Um, and the wild thing was that in the practice, I like slayed the practice one. They were like, oh, this will be like a you know a five minute limit to do these five puzzles. Like you know, fine. And I do it in like four minutes and 10 seconds or something like that. These, all these, all five of these. So for the actual show, they cut it down to four minutes and 30 seconds, uh, which I learned, oh, I don't know, 20 seconds before I went on stage. No. So yeah, I did. I like did not know about it at all. Whoa. um, Okay. So I thought we had the same story because they did the same thing to, we talked about this, right? You know, they did the same thing to me, but I had an entire like two days because I was getting the, basically my challenge was, I had 25 seconds to add, or I had 40 total seconds eventually. But what it was, was I had 25 second head start on these dominoes. I'd add up hundred yeah. dominoes and then they kick over the first yep. domino after 25 seconds. Well, I was getting it fairly fast as well. So they took it down to 20 seconds, but they told me that before we did our dress rehearsal. So then in our dress rehearsal, I have a pace and a rhythm and I, I don't finish in time. And so now I'm in like panic meltdown mode because I don't miss very often. And so I miss it in the actual rehearsal. And now I'm thinking I really am going to embarrass myself. That's why if you notice in the episode after, so the plan was for me to have the answer, wait for Cal to say, okay, Chris, what is the answer? And then for dramatic effect, I say the answer. Oh, is that what it is? Well, what ended up happening was I immediately shout the answer. As soon as I finished, that wasn't planned. I did that only because <laughs> nice. I was so I was so excited that I got I knew I knew it was right. Like I had yeah. I knew I didn't make a mistake. And I was so excited that I finished on time. That's why you just see me like jumping and running around the stage because I couldn't oh, believe yeah. that I actually did it. And they got their dramatic effect because there was oh, yeah. no time left for me or you for that matter. Yeah. Um 
Yeah, so I got my time cut by 30 seconds, which I like didn't know until pretty much I went out there. And like I said, there was a um there were a couple of red herrings of mine. Like the one I remember was um I had to, I had to finish a five letter word um starting with V and ending in L. And the word that came to mind was uh vital and it seemed to fit with a couple other things, so I was pretty sure it was right. And it really hung me up and I couldn't like find the word to fit with it, the nine letter word that fit with that grid. And I finally dug myself out of it um with a uh, viral, which with that turned out to be the answer uh for that Classic. for that slot. Um, and I remember like this, this got cut out of the episode, which I have mixed feelings about. Like maybe it was, I understand why they did it, but I kind of wish it got left in. Um, so the clock is ticking down. I'm like, I, I, I'm, I'm getting into that panic mode too. Right. I'm right, sort of right, like, right. Oh my God, I'm going to screw this up after crushing the rehearsal and crushing it. Every time I've done it, I'm going to screw up the real thing. This is terrible. This sucks. <laughs> um, and so I, I know the time's winding down and I hear Mike Tyson say 30 seconds. Oh, and I just no. go, Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Just out of, just out of, I'm going like, <laughs> um, and this, this this is true. Honestly, I I with maybe I don't know so around that point, 20, 25 seconds left, like a few seconds after that, I thought to myself, I'm not going to finish. I'm screwed. Right. Like this is this is done. This is over. And I just I just started writing. I just started throwing anything at the wall to see what fits. And then and then like it occurred to me, like I broke through and I finished with like literally one second left. And, so and they got their drama, but um I, I will and they got their drama with a little bit of scribble at the end. Uh, oh my god, that was the other thing. That interface, good lord. Like I, I lost at least 5 seconds. I kept forgetting to like go out of eraser mode. It was right, just ugh. right. It was like what is this? Photoshop like come on. It was it was and fun. there was like one part where like so, I don't I think it was a it was some kind of bug in the software where like I selected the pen tool and then like somehow like it detected a, a line t- or like a a pad touch like right. On like the corner of the screen, so there's like a line going from like the center of the grid, like all the way to like the corner of the screen. It looks terrible. Fantastic. So top notch. Know, was, can't I, imagine. I, what, I, I can't like imagine what the. Sh- you know, we are we are kind of like do doing on the show a little bit, but to be fair, it gave us a great opportunity. And we met some cool people, so I am for, I am forever grateful for yeah. those superhuman people. But yeah, it was, it was very time. cool. Like to put to put something like what I do on TV. Yeah, it's just it's not easy, and they, you know, did their did their best with it. Yeah, and from I mean, at the end of the day, for me, the Italian version of that show got wind of it, and I got a trip to Europe, which I never. Oh thought yeah, was I forgot about that, dude. You talk about unbelievable. I mean, the sh- that the actual show over there didn't go well because I was sicker than any human should ever be. I'm pretty sure I had a double version of COVID before COVID even double COVID before, before anyone ever knew what COVID was. In all honesty, all jokes because it was January 2019. So if it wasn't COVID, okay, I, I don't I don't know if that's a for real thing because I didn't go to a doctor over there because I couldn't go to a doctor. They wouldn't take me to a doctor, and I'm just. I'm losing my mind, but I do think it was some sort of double pneumonia. Whatever the case was, I didn't get to enjoy Italy even in the slightest, and I was there for Man. probably the same amount of time, seven, eight days, something like that. Finally, on the last day, I went outside just because I couldn't stay in the hotel. But, I mean, I was I was coughing up everything you could possibly imagine, and I was just – I was ready. I had accepted that this dominoes. is how I'm going to go. <laughs> yeah, I was coughing up dominoes, yes. <laughs> um, I, I, I had accepted that this is how I'm going to go out at some movie set in – Italy sleeping in my dressing room, <laughs> whatever the Fantastic. case. Um, so since that show though, which obviously if you haven't seen the episode, it's episode five, all parts extraordinary. I, I hope that you go type it in your Google machine because it is somewhere out there. I can't tell it's you. A where, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fantastic. We, uh, we get to talk about how they do a little bit of a backstory on both of us, which mine was interesting because I had just moved to a new area of where I didn't know anything, like literally like a couple of weeks before. And they're like, Hey, well, you know, what, what's there to do here? And like, blah, blah. And I'm I, I don't know. Like, <laughs> we can, oh, well, we'll just go film you playing basketball. I don't even play basketball. Yeah, like, that, but, that was just, it was the weirdest. That, it was, it was, that was a weird day. Cause they did like the day before and they did all mine, like the whole getting to know you segment. They filmed that, um, like around L in and around LA, which where I do not live. <laughs> yeah. Not from and never lived and don't really know at all. Um, there was one part in this, the, this is the this is the thing I'm extremely grateful they uh, they cut out of the show. There was one part where they they had us go into a coffee shop and then like one of like the production assistants or something, uh, Hannah. They they like they like, talked to the, the like the barista or whatever there, and they had Hannah stand in and like pretend to be the barista for like this the segment we were filming in which I like which I like kind of like smooth talk with like my wordplay knowledge and then I get her number. Just the most just the, what a a thing I would never do. B like completely manufactured. Just, just everything about it was just weird. Oh, almost was, like just, calling was, yourself a mental math genius on national television. A, yes, something I would never do. At all. 
two completely manufactured. Listen, people can call me brash, cocky, arrogant, whatever, because at times over the years, I have ex exhibited some of those qualities unintentionally. I would never call myself a mental math genius under any circumstances, but more so not on national television. Yeah, whatever that was it, it was it was just so weird. I, I'm, I'm sitting there going and like and the other thing was Hannah was gorgeous. And I'm, I'm just like, this is really weird. <laughs> Shout out to Hannah, production Shout out assistant to Hannah. from L. Well, we hope the you point where I was like the next day. I was like, was that weird? I'm sorry. Did I make that too weird? Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I, I really think... didn't want to like make her uncomfortable. But like, I, I don't think anyone involved in that enjoyed it. And thank God it was not. Uh... I'm going to have to email Julie and see if she can get me that clip because that sounds fantastic. I'm sure I, they still I, have I, these. I actually saw to it that all copies were burned and the ashes uh, scattered to the poles. So. I don't know about that. Fox keeps everything. It's in the no, archives. No. The show, not exactly our best moment in terms of we didn't win anything. But what came out of that, a lot of good memories. We, of course, went out in L.A. for a couple of nights. Yep. And then we've met up since then. Boston yeah. is the one that come to mind, at least the first trip that we met up. And some random, I don't even know why you were there. I don't even know why I was there. But for some uh, reason, we found ourselves in Boston. It's a, It might have been. What, you don't remember what time of year it was? Uh, don't it was the summertime, probably. It, it was the summer, I think. I oh, think it was the week before. We're there before, um, before the show because we sat and watched the preview on our phone. It's the week before our show aired, yes. so it was okay. July of 2017. Makes sense because I think in I, I go to a I go to the uh, National Puzzlers League convention uh, every year, which moves around. Of course, how can I? Yeah, forget? obviously. Um, I think in 2017 it was in Boston, so that's I was there for that, nice. and uh, you happened to be there, and uh. You know, we, we struck out with speed. girls. It was great and uh, drank it's a lot of beer. Yeah. It's what you do in Boston, don't you? It's what you, it's what you do. Fantastic. I did. For, uh, for the record, though, I did get to check off a bucket list item in Boston that day because I've always wanted to be called Wicked Smart by a girl in Boston. And that's oh, exactly man. what happened. Oh, so man. Maybe, maybe I'll wear the shirt next time. Very. Um, so then we've, of course. We've chased around. We've been to Phoenix and Vegas. We've we've done that sort of thing. You introduced me to my first escape room. No, oh, yeah. I want to I want to talk about this because not only did I get hooked, we did three that day. I was oh, so yeah. uh, enamored with it. But you have quite uh, more of a detailed history with escape rooms than I do. So please tell me a little bit about that. Oh, I've I've been doing them since basically they came stateside. There's a there's a Japanese company called uh, Scrap that uh, had escaped that, that that came over to San Francisco and and kind of brought some games with them. Um. And, uh, you know, I played, I played one. I like, you know, I liked the idea of done puzzle hunts and all that. Uh, and, uh, I just found it very, very fun. And I've done about 250 over the years, uh, since then, which uh, is in, in so all, shocking. all kinds of, yeah. I try not to think about how much money disposable <laughs> income I've spent on escape <laughs> yes. rooms, but more than, uh, more than is safe or reasonable. That's a good time though. I mean, yeah, you, there, there's worse things you could spend it on. Right. Anytime I'm in a new city, like I always kind of look up, uh, look up the uh, escape rooms and uh, kind of see what the good ones are. So have you ever been on one of the, you told me once about this escape room trip that you went on now, is that, was that an often thing or was that kind of few and far between? Um, Like it, like a, when I flew out of town to go the to one, that, or... the, the one that comes to mind is the one where you told me you did something like 11 in one day. Which oh, I that was, that was just, a, uh, that wasn't a, I mean, I guess it was a trip cause I don't live in San Jose, but it wasn't a huge journey. I didn't have to fly anywhere. Yeah. But how um, yeah, my friend uh, Shry and I went, uh, went to uh, San Jose and we played 11 escape rooms in one day. And, and I actually have a tip for you. If you want to do that, which is don't No, never, ever. Let's say by the ninth one, we were just fried. Like yeah, we were, these, we were these in, things in, aren't in, short. In. Like, I mean, let's, let's, for the most part, I'd say what 99% of maybe even all of them are like a one hour time limit, right? Definitely not all of them, but uh, I've played a, a handful that are shorter and a handful that are longer. Okay. Fair enough. I, this is but my, yeah, an hour limit. is absolutely the par time. Okay. So, 11, I mean, a very, very simple math equation would be that's 11 hours. And if they're any longer, that means that's more than any human should be awake, much less actually doing escape rooms. Yeah. And there's still like, the, I mean, uh, some of the games were in like the same location. We play like two or three in one location, but they're still like commuting. Um, you know, theoretically one should eat at some point. Uh, so yeah, by the, by the ninth or 10th one, we were just like, we were in a room. We we're just like, we, we come across like the slightest, you know, stumbling block. We're like, we don't know. Give us a hint. <laughs> I hope they at least gave you a t-shirt for this. Uh, at that day I did not, but one, one time in Chicago, I played, I played four escape rooms in one day at a place that was near, near my hotel. And they, they gave me a t-shirt after it. Fantastic. Cause of course I won all four. Now, both of us have spent time in Chicago. You are actually, well, maybe we're, we both might be equal of well-traveled, but you definitely spent some time overseas, which I did not in terms of living. I haven't asked you ever much about your childhood, though. Where did you actually grow up? 
Uh, spent uh, and first... I use that loosely. You have not grown up. Where did you actually oh, yeah, spend I mean, your I mean, Just the hair. That's that's it. <laughs> exactly. Um, I spent the first almost 13 years of my life in Connecticut. Um, and then uh, my dad got a new job and we moved to uh, England. And I went through, I went to an uh, international slash American school there. A lot of Americans, a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of people from all across the world as well. Right. Um, very, uh, very multicultural. And I did uh, basically the equivalents of eighth through 12th grade there. And it was an international school. So I did like AP classes and took the SAT and all that. Now you say it's an American school in England. Are you actually in school with other Americans? Is that what that means? Or is a lot, a lot of other Americans? Yeah, but gotcha. like I said, there are a lot, a lot of Asians, a lot of, a uh, lot, a lot of Indians. Uh, Fairly uh, diverse. Arabs. Then. Yeah, it was, it was very diverse. Okay, sure. fair enough. Now, and you came back when to America when? Uh, right after, uh, right after high school. So that would have been uh, uh, summer of two thousand two. Here's where we age himself. Well, well done, man. We appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, where did you meet? Uh, random question about Nelson Dallas. Where did you meet Nelson? Uh, that wasn't that was in eighth grade. He uh, I mean, this as as you might guess, this this is the kind of school where it was very transient, like every year kids are moving away, other kids are coming in. Um, there was actually there was exactly one guy in my class who did the entire like pre-K through 12 at this school. And that was because his parents worked there. Right. And he's got like a special shot at graduation. Like he was actually here all <laughs> like he was the only one. It was like oh, that just never happens. Um so yeah, when I moved in uh, eighth grade, uh, Nelson was there. Um, I think he left after ninth grade, if memory serves. Fair um, enough. But yeah, from your time in England, is that where your love of Chelsea Football Club started? Yeah, I mean it's it's is it's it's as arbitrary as kind of any American that, like picks a Premier League team. Um, yeah, you we know, you know we just I I moved over there. I did I knew absolutely nothing right. about English or any European soccer. Just blank slate. I knew nothing. Um. And, uh, you know, my dad, you know, you know, we're, we're sports fans. He wanted to get into it. And so he, he was just at work and um, talk with a colleague kid of his that he knew was a, a soccer fan. He said, yeah, you know, thinking of getting a new club. He's like, oh, well, my club's Chelsea. Started watching Chelsea and there it is. The rest is history. And the rest, the rest is history. And, and uh, there's been some good times and uh, some less good and very current times. <laughs> yeah. Only two Champions Leagues. <laughs> when? Well, the, the, the bad times are uh, are very current. Yeah. Who are you telling? Yeah, I get yeah, it. But okay. yeah, it's it's not fun. <laughs> I'll do it's uh not fun. if it, any, anyone that knows me knows I am an Everton supporter and you can follow me on my other channels to hear me bitch and moan about that. So we'll we'll save that for a yeah. different time. No shortage of uh, a fodder. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's rough. And I and I just I just know Arsenal's gonna win the leagues. That's the only like sensible way this nightmare of a season can end. Well, they did stumble today, but that's they did. They story. did. I saw that story. Another story in and of itself. They really had that one, but we'll get to that much later. Speaking of sports, though, are you ready at all to talk about the Hartford Whalers? I mean, it's it it, it wounds me to this day. I mean, it's okay. been 26 years. I'm still not completely over it. For, but for uh, those yes. who, who don't know, the Hartford Whalers were a National Hockey League team that moved from Hartford, Connecticut to Raleigh, North Carolina, and uh, I believe what 1996, maybe seven, 1997. And Tyler still has a rough time with it. Uh, that was your child. That was, was was that actually a childhood team growing up in Connecticut? I would assume. Absolutely. So. Yeah. I mean, Connecticut, you have the Whalers and, you know, thank we still have a uh, UConn basketball. Right. Um, so, I, you know, I root, I root for those teams to this day, but you know, that, I, the way I like to say like, yeah, the Whalers haven't lost a game in 26 years. <laughs> undefeated. <laughs> um, but yeah, they were like, they were the team. Cause you know, sandwiched between Boston and New York, like those are like the, it was like the big boys. They all they have teams in all the sports. Sure. You know, in the case of New York, multiple teams. It's like, hey, you know, this is this is our this is our kind of entry into the big time. And, and they your... sucked. We threw the ticker tape parade because they made the second round of the playoffs. That's fantastic. A cult following, if you like. Their jersey still speaking of cult following, their jersey still is a top seller. So I, I they're more popular now than when they existed, I swear. How is that a thing? It's it's just the retro mania. People yeah. like, oh and plus it's an objectively cool logo. Like Name another logo that uses negative space the right. way the Whalers logo does. Fair enough. That is a good point. So cr when do crossword puzzles come into play? Is that from a childhood thing or is that more in your teenage years? Um, no, kind of both. I mean, I'm doing puzzles just forever, just as long as I can remember, just, you know, kids books. Um, right. I was the sort of kid that would get like books of math problems and like do them for fun. So you're into all puzzles then. Now, what, um, I, I guess, why did crossword puzzles stick? Were you better at those than others? Or was it just kind of a desire to get better? Or did you find it that, that it came very natural? No, I'd say mostly the desire to get better. Um, the, how that started with the New York Times puzzle in particular. Um, my, uh, my history teacher uh, in ninth grade was uh, would you know try the puzzle every day. There's a paper called, I don't know if it still exists, called the International Herald Tribune. And they ran the, uh, the Times puzzle. 
and we subscribed to it and you know they got it to school and all that um so Shout I, out I, to have, them. have a have a copy of the have co- copy of the puzzle of the nice. times puzzle every every uh every day um so in ninth, ninth grade it's uh it was a tutorial period basically a, like a study hall kind of right. near the end of the day it's on a friday and like it's friday afternoon i'm just i'm not doing any homework like this is like why would i do that <laughs> exactly um and uh Standard. my history teacher was seated next to me and had the friday that day's friday times puzzle and i just asked if i could try it she hands it to me i think i filled in two answers that day one of which was right <laughs> proud so, of you kid real uh real barn burner for me there <laughs> um yeah but i was just i was just hooked and then um i decided i wanted to try again so i was in the herald tribune i can you know i get it out i can cut out the puzzle and i um i completed it i was like holy crap i got super good at these things really quickly and at that point i was gently informed that uh monday is typically very easy and right friday i would likely have uh the same results i saw on friday um, but I just kept going every day. Like, even though I'd fail a Tuesday, I would still try Wednesday. I'd fail at that Thursday. I would just keep going, even though I failed basically every day. Right. Um, I think I got my first Tuesday down like a month later and, uh, my first Friday down like a year later. And I, I started like doing, I started finding more puzzles online, doing those every day. Um, and this so is I, kind of at the Genesis of the internet too, right? For the, for yeah, all this, purposes. this was, this would have been uh late 98, right. early 99. Okay, so we're really going. We're back to America Online dial-up mode. Yeah, that's that's what we had actually at home. <laughs> Very nice. I remember the noises fondly. So then, how do you find this uh, American Crossword Puzzle tournament? It's been going since much before that. Not as oh, yeah. big, obviously. It's been going since uh, seventy-eight. Okay, the first year. How'd you find that? Um, well, at some point, I decided I want to try uh, crossword constructing, just as a whim, just like ah, oh, this this might be this might be fun to do. I had like a. I had like a device called a, the Franklin crosswords solver. Um, it was just like this electronic device that's, you know, replicated in like two megabytes on the internet nowadays. Cause it's super easy. Right, right. Um, you would just type in a pattern of letters and question marks and it would give you a list of all the words that could fit there uh, from its dictionary. Um, you can put a star for like any number of letters, sort of like a rudimentary regular expression sort of deal. Um, and I was like, I realized, oh, I could use this to make, pu- make crosswords. I could type in, you know, the slot I'm trying to fill and it would give me what I could, what I could use there. Um, so I, I started to get into it, started making, you know, frankly, really, really bad puzzles. Um, and there was a website, uh, called Cruciverb, which was, uh, that I found just searching around which was a, uh, a crossword constructors forum. So, um, I joined that and, you know, I, I don't think I posted to it terribly often, you know, once in a while. Uh, but yeah, all the all the you know big crossword constructors whose names I'd come to know or you know in this forum, so you know thought it was cool. And around uh, the time of the tournament, uh, you know the discussion uh, turned towards that. It came up on that. It's like, oh, that sounds uh, really cool. And I forget when exactly I heard about it. I doubt I heard about it and then like immediately went. Right. But um, in 2001, uh, you know I, you know with the help of my parents and uh, Will Shorts himself, who, uh, who runs the tournament, uh, I managed to fly over from England to uh, to New York City and then uh, over to uh, Stanford to uh, attend this tournament for the first time. And, now, are uh, you yeah, are you star, are you starstruck? Are you mesmerized? Are you kind of overwhelmed as soon as you walk into this and see all yeah, the players? Yeah, uh, starstruck like meet meet these puzzle makers and uh, definitely uh, overwhelmed with all these puzzle lovers. A lot of people, you know, obviously they have their their friend groups and all that. And I I know for a fact that I really didn't make a good first impression on a lot of people. Like you know, just kind of too eager to impress, too like kind of uh, like manic almost. Um, you know, kind of like in an annoying way. Yeah, but you're still a kid. Come on. Yeah, exactly. And jet lagged to hell. I probably got three hours of sleep that entire weekend. Right. Um, so that didn't that didn't that didn't help matters. <laughs> um, so I'm grateful to uh many of my puzzle friends who met me that weekend or you know, not long thereafter and uh you know stuck with me, even though I know for a fact that a lot of them very much did not like me at first. Now, your first win comes in what year? That was uh 2005. I, I usually wait to ask this because I know you have seven wins. Is there one, and is it that one that sticks out as being your favorite? Boy, I mean, there's favorites for different reasons. Right. Um, 05 was just because, I mean, I guess when push comes to shove, you have to put 05 first just because that was the first. It accomplished you, a goal that I right. set for you myself. You never forget the first, exactly. Which was um, to be the youngest champion ever. The record was 23. So I had three or four years to do it, depending on how the months shook out. I can't remember. Right, right. Um, and that was also the year that that got that was the tournament that got filmed for the documentary Wordplay, which came out right. in 06. Right, right, right. So not only is this my first win, set the record for the youngest champion ever, um, but it was also it was also immortalized in a nationally released documentary. 
that went right. to Sundance, which was a whole other crazy experience. Well, so that's you brought it up. I was going to get to that, but we might as well cover it now. So wordplay, I have a few questions on this one. Yeah. Just from a simple perspective, what was it like to have cameras following you around? Because, again, you're still for all intents and purposes, you're still a kid at that point. Yeah. Yeah. I was living in my fraternity house. Shout out to Find New Delta. Um, and this, this, I remember getting this call and this guy's like, I'm doing a documentary about Will Shorts. It, the, the documentary was originally just supposed to be about, you know, Will Shorts and, you know, this community around the, you know, time puzzle. Like the tournament was not a part of it at all. Right. Will was like, this tournament's a huge thing. You got to come cover it. And it ended up being like a main focus of the movie. Um, but I got this call, and, you know, Will, you know, turned him on to several people who had a good chance to win the tournament that might be good to interview. And I was one of them. He calls me up and I'm like, okay, yeah. A, come visit i guess sure like oh cool i'll enjoy seeing this on channel 487 at three in the morning <laughs> three years down the line public access TV. yeah exactly <laughs> uh, glorious sd um yeah so he comes up and uh films me uh you know around uh the campus of uh rpi and uh at uh at find you delta at a um, keg party in an ai course i was in at the time and uh my professor uh selmer was um was able to kind of bring the conversation across where it was like Jermaine for the movie. So that was, that was kind of cool of him. Um, and, and it was really weird because I'm like, hi everyone, this guy's filming me. Here's some releases for all of you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, enjoy. We'll, we'll, we'll not put you in if you don't want to be, you know, if you don't like it, get out. Yeah. <laughs> Cause we're filming here. And this is my most, show. Now the most awkward thing was when him. He filmed, um, and very, very little of this made it into the, uh, actual final movie. I think there's like one shot of it. And there's no dialogue. It's just like with my voiceover or music or something. Right. Um, but when he filmed us eating dinner, and I remember that being just the quietest dinner because, like, well, we shouldn't make uh, any of the jokes or have you, any of the conversation we usually have. <laughs> it's a frat house. What exactly. do you guys expect? Exactly. Yeah. He's like, you know, filming us up. He's like outside and like filming us through the window or all this, like. <laughs> so it was it was a very weird experience for everyone. But um, so so wordplay boosts the tournament quite a bit, right? Because I, bit. I looked I looked up the attendance numbers before that, and after yep. wordplay came out, it instantly jumped by two hundred entrants. Did yep. you notice a different level uh, or, to, or a different degree of difficulty? I should say, were the people that came in just kind of happy to be there, or were these some serious crossword puzzlers? Now, well, for, I mean, for the most part, happy to be there because that is what the majority of the attendees are like. Almost all the attendees know they're not going to win or challenge for a prize, and right. they don't care. They're fine with that. They just want to challenge themselves, maybe set a certain modest goal, like top, you know, three hundred or whatever it is, um, top, you know, thirty percent, what have you, get into the C division, something like that. And that's and some people are just there to enjoy the puzzle. So it's right, and that's 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 great, you know. Um, but there are definitely uh, at least one or two that uh, um, learned about it through the movie and became very very serious about it. Um, including one who's uh, won the tournament five or nine times now. So <laughs> going to get to him in just a bit. As a matter yeah. of fact, might as well do it now. So you won, I believe, five in a row, right? Five in a row. Oh, five to nine. And then Dan Fair, a gentleman by the name of Dan Fair, decided he was kind of tired of your BS and just comes in and wins. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. I, yeah, he, he had like a vision board that was all just me with my eyes cut out the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. So do no. you hate this guy or what? Not true. That's not sounds, true. He sounds no. terrible. Wins six in a row and just ruins the tournament for everybody right? else. It's pretty funny because I had the record for most consecutive titles and I held it for literally the shortest amount of time mathematically possible. <laughs> yeah. Had the he five just... and then immediately a six. <laughs> I've never met or spoken to Dan Fair, but to win, I mean, listen, there's 700 people that enter this tournament ish yeah. about, right? He wins yeah. six in a row. That to a monumental feat. Oh, it has yeah, to he's be. ridiculous. Yeah. He's, he's insanely good. It defies description. You, you've told me he's a nice guy. I don't know if I yes, believe that yes. or not. We, we okay, get along fair. fine. Shout out to Dan Fair. Also reigning champion, if I might add, right? I believe he won yeah, last week. Yeah, that was actually um he actually won the final by one second. Stop, really? Is yeah. that the closest? I was I was I was sucking wind over in third place. I was not involved in this at all. <laughs> right. Um Um, but yeah, this this kid, uh Paolo, who's like, I don't know, 22, 23, something I feel like that. Bad for that kid. Yeah, well, I've been there. That's how I lost in uh I don't know, 2017 or 18, somewhere in there. Right. Um, I lost by less, even less than that, like literally l probably less than half a second. Yeah. But I don't feel bad for you. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying for the viewer. <laughs> well, um, fair enough. so I've been, so I know exactly how I felt. Cause like, yeah, I too have lost a national championship by a comically small margin. So Paolo um, though, he's a new newcomer to this tournament though. Yeah. Oh, relatively. He's been there a few years. Um, he was always really fast, but like, um, last year when I won, um, he was, he was super fast, but, um, still a little bit messy in that he would make mistakes. Right. And the way the scoring works, like a, a mistake, particularly your first mistake on a puzzle is very punitive. Like at the top level, you realistically can't make the final if you make a mistake. 
unless everyone else does too. That makes sense. But if they're if they're perfect solvers, like at the top, like if you make a mistake, like you're, you're done. You're, you're not going to make it. What? So, sorry, you said there's seven puzzles throughout the day, right? Six on Saturday and then one more on Sunday. Okay. And then let, let, for, for the ones on Saturday, how about how long do these take at a top level? Um, well, the first one, which is intended to be easy, like kind of a, you know, it's, you know, Monday level 15 by 15 New York times puzzle. Like at the top level, you gotta be doing that in under three minutes. Okay. Once in a while, like I know Dan's done it. I've, I never have, and I never will. And I'm completely at peace with that. <laughs> um, uh, you can, you can get it under two, but that like, that's kind of a perfect storm. Like, so, you, so you're, really you're going to have, like, you're going to have kids one day and they're going to tell you they have a goal and you're just going to be like, ah, just give up. Yeah ridiculous okay, yeah fair enough well i mean i question your premise about the whole kid thing but you know um you might have kids one day maybe and if they come to you and say i really feel good it, about okay this, <laughs> you might have a nephew one day or a niece <laughs> or or just some random kid I find on the street <laughs> <sighs> you're gonna speak to a younger generation one day right mm-hmm. you're gonna be giving pep talks a motivational speaker because that's gotta be right up your alley right Oh yeah, and, absolutely. And, and absolutely. they're just gonna say, "Man, I just I can't get over the hump. I really want to do it, but I just can't." And you're gonna be like, "Yeah, that's right. You can't." <laughs> I mean, follow your dreams, but like, be realistic about it. <sighs> Unbelievable. No, but yeah, I mean, it, it can't it can be done, and you know, like Dan's done it once or twice, but like, puzzle one, it, it's got to be a perfect storm. Like, you really can't mess up like right. at all, like erase anything. Um, so the I, target the target is three. You get th- you get you know sub three on that, you're fine. Because yeah. it's by the way, the scoring is minute based, which is a, l- a little strange and you know maybe a little bit inadequate in the era of you know kind of an arms race of people getting faster and faster. But essentially, solving it in two hundred one is the same as solving it in two fifty nine. Right. That was my two fifty nine is better is you know significantly objectively better than solving it in three hundred one. I don't like that. It's I think I mean it's hard just because people are collecting papers manually, so it's. You can't really do it to the second. It's pretty much impossible. Right. Um, but, you know, what? so what the solvers will do is that they, you know, they look up, they're finished, look up at the clock, and they see there's 45 seconds left in the minute. Well, they're going to take 40 seconds to and proof, just make sure yeah. they didn't do anything stupid because it's makes it, sense. that makes has no effect. So at the top level, like you'll it, it, actually even all levels, because most people know to do this, um, there'll be like absolutely nothing for like the first 45 seconds of the minute. Right. And then the last 10 to 15 seconds, like everyone's hand will go up. We've seen many booms, if you like, right? We've we've seen an obvious poker boom since 2003 mm-hmm. or something like that. We've even seen recent, uh, you can say the chess boom. I think that's been, re- COVID made chess grow in popularity, but yep. the, the signs of that were happening right before that. We've even seen a, a Tetris boom. Yep. Do you see any sort of boom happening in the puzzle world? I think with those things, it's 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 more telegenic. Like I I spoke about this with the with the superhuman stuff. Like poker, you can like see a hand, like see, oh, you know, what's he gonna do? Like, what would I do there? Should I what I call there, what I raise, you know, whatever. Right. Um, Tetris, you can kind of like it's very visually arresting. You can kind of see, you know, the the shapes coming down, like where's he gonna put that? Um, and you know, chess, you can you can do the same thing, like sure. you know, commentary, like, oh, you know, that's that was an interesting move. How is he gonna how is he gonna counter this threat to his knight? And you know, the players can kind of look at it at home and like figure out what they would do or just kind of follow the commentary. It's much harder with crosswords, like because we're just looking on a, at a sheet of paper, list of clues, you know, in, in our pencil in hand, writing into the grid, spending no more than a couple seconds on each clue at the most. Um, sometimes less than that if we don't read a clue because we filled in all the crosswords and we're trying to like shave some seconds off the time. Right. So it's it, it, it's really hard to do. The closest it comes is the final, where you have three people on whiteboards. And you do have commentary for that, right? There is commentary for that. And, you know, but even then, like the three people are just, you know, we got, we got the, we got the, the earbuds, which are playing white noise. And then like got the air traffic headphones over that. Right. Um, and it's just three people just, you know, just going like that, just looking at the paper and just going like that. To be fair, it is intense. I have watched it is a intense. couple of these I mean, I, yeah. my nerves jangle every time. Yeah. I'm I mean, sure. I, you know, I've been the entire spectrum. Like I've been on the winning end. I've, you know, been on like, you know, finishing last, but being the only correct one and winning that way. Um, just being a distant third, uh, I've pretty much had every experience there is to have up there. Pat, ringing in first and then having a mistake. <laughs> yeah, that happened. Sorry, once. sorry to bring that up, <laughs> which, which remains hands down the dumbest error I've ever made at the tournament. Like it's, it's not it's, close. It's like, been mistakes, it's been but... years. I, I do remember personally how devastated you were after that because we. Uh, but I, I had it. I was like I was like a minute clear. I was sure. Sure, I had it. You want to? Okay, well then what what happened then? You say it's the dumbest error. What what exactly happened? All right. Well, one clue. All right. I basically filled in a square 
based solely on one answer and neither clue. So I like filled in like, well, it has to be that. Did not check that the across clue made a word. Did not check that either clue worked with what I put there. So it was blank, E-A-T-A-X. I was like, oh, T-Tax. Sure, like, you know, the, 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 you know, the colonial times, the T-Tax, Boston yeah. Tea Party. Yeah, great. <laughs> filled it in, moved on. Because that was my last letter in that corner. And, you know, the audience is seeing this. And they're like, he moved on. He's done. He's not going to come back. To that. I like, remember the commentary for that. Yeah. And I was. Very, they were devastated. Um, And then, like, going across was like, I think I wanted to feel like it was glat, which um, the astute viewers will note is not a word. So it's supposed to be meat axe, which I'd known if I'd glanced Classic. at the clue for upwards of half a second. You mean the Boston Meat Party, the meat tax, right? Of course. Yeah, the yeah. meat tax. Yeah. yeah. And that and that was just gone. Like if the across had made a word, like at least it would have been understandable. Like, okay, yeah. I mean, how many things are in E A T A X? Right. It's got to be that. And if a cross makes a word, great, we're golden. But it didn't make a word. I didn't read either clue. And it's just it's just the pressure of knowing that someone's right there. And this is I think this is right on the heels of me losing by a second. So it's like any any moment could be the one. I gotta I gotta move on. I can't I can't do this. Not to dwell on that too much, but I do have to ask because I've experienced these lows in the in the game or in the uh, world of competitive dominoes. Was there ever a moment, especially at that point after that mistake, where you thought, you know what, that's it. I'm kind of done. Like I don't know if I'll ever get back to the top of the mountain. Um, I don't know if it was because of that specifically, but I I absolutely had that thought because when you when you know you win five and then the 2010s happen and you know i mean there are there are a few other champions in there certainly but for the most part dan is dominating the tournament and i'm just like you know he's you know he's kicked my ass in the final you know five times or whatever it is you know plus the mistake i made and the one that was really close but like at least three other times where he beat me handily and you know then i see guys like paolo coming up who are younger like they're starting to be a, quite a few younger solvers who are significantly younger than I am and insanely fast and insanely good. And I'm just thinking like, I don't think it's going to happen again. Like yeah. I had my five and you know, I've had, I, I haven't won this thing for 10 years. And uh, you know, I think it's, I think it's kind of starting to leave me behind, especially because when I won the five, I was either in college or like right out of college. And I didn't really have too much of a social life. I didn't have a lot of stuff going on. So I spent a lot of time training. Right. And over the years, that's just become less of a priority for me. There are other things I'd rather do with my time. Sure. It's still important to me. It's still competitive and it's important to me to win and I would like to win, but I'm also not willing to sit at a computer or sit at a, you know, desk with a stack of puzzles for 12 hours on a nice day to train. And that, you know, I'm, that's an extreme term, but. You no, know, but I, it is I, what it is. It's just it's, the reality. It is it's what just, it is. Like, you so have I, to stay sharp. I've, I've kind of made, I, I kind of made my peace with that. Like, well, it's either I'm content with what I got with that cool run of five titles that I had. Or I like really up my training game at the expense of other things in my life. Yeah. So I kind of made my peace with it. And it also, 20, oh, go ahead. Sorry. In 2019, I actually, um, I skipped the tournament. Just like it was the, I missed 2002, but that was because I was still in England. I, I, I couldn't go. Like that was, just, that was not going to happen. 2019, I could have gone and I was just like, I just need to step back from this. I don't remember this. Okay. Yeah. 2019, I just, I just straight up didn't go. Um, there were a couple of other factors I'd been laid off, like, six weeks prior right i had like another trip planned like right after the turn right before the tournament was supposed to happen um so it's just like this seems like the right time for me to just get a break from this um i said no big deal i'll just go back in 2020 well we all know how that and happened. we know how that turned out <laughs> yeah 2021 um things were still kind of in the thick of it you know it happens around you know march april every year no well, really march um and it was gonna be an online tournament because i still you know still oh, that's right i forgot about that okay yeah so I was like, well, you know, I solve when I solve, you know, leisurely, I do it on the computer. I'm really good at it. I've gotten really good. Um, because that's just I just get the most practice there naturally doing sure. puzzles for fun. Sure. Um, so like, okay, all right, we're back, we're back in. Let's do this. I don't have to like fly across the country. Let's 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 do this. Um, and it goes really well. Um, so puzzle five, the toughest, which is the toughest of the uh tournament besides the final. Um, it's you know, so it's the like the middle of the afternoon puzzle, and it just it's always got like a really weird theme and really hard clues it just it wrecks a lot of casual solvers and it's really kind of a it can really serve as like a pack separator because like how fast can you solve this really tough puzzle um and i i beat i beat the tournament basically like i did it faster than any other contestant i made the final and uh it was a it was a relatively easy final by by that standard um so we were all like you know sequestered like we did the puzzle on our own and then 
the way that, the way that it was we all we they did the we did the puzzle at the same time just on our own um and they like had it recorded at their end and then we would i mean i guess we could have talked like right after to like compare and like see what right, happened right, right, but we right. didn't so what we ended up doing was we watched along with everyone else we learned at the same time everyone else did who had won and you didn't think that you had won though if i remember well, i saw this well i had i finished it i submitted it i saw 70 out of 70 or whoever the word count was it was all correct i did it in exactly three minutes the championship puzzle in three minutes which is insane like i never thought i'd even right. approach that because it's a, a tough puzzle and i thought i just won this thing like i crushed that and then i that lasted maybe three seconds before i was like okay the other two guys in the final are also insanely good they also crushed it like guaranteed so i didn't know so then i'm watching the rec- watching the recording along with everyone else and i am behind i am in third place I'm like how how did i do this this fast and i'm still like a distant third but then like i start to catch up and one guy finishes one guy de- uh finishes first but he made a typo in the lower right which is bad, bad super easy to do because right. you're typing and trying to go fast. Like I've absolutely done it when I'm solving, even casually. When I'm not trying to go to particularly fast, I'll put something in that just makes no sense. I typed it wrong. Um, That's so, what I would like, blame it on too. There's actually, actually Dan posted a screenshot of like, there's a screenshot of me and Eric, the other finalists. Um, the first shot is us, you know, like, you know, Eric's like mid applause. I'm like mid applause because you he, he see that he's finished. And I'm like, okay, you won. Great job. It's first title. Right, and then and then the second shot is both of us going like, because like we learned that he made a mistake, and then like so all of a sudden I'm like, okay, I'm focused on me and Eric, and we're close. He got kind of hung up in like the last corner, like he had a wrong answer, that like took him a while. I mean, he figured it out obviously, but it took him um, took him a second to kind of erase it and back out of it. And uh, I think I ended up winning by like seven seconds, something in that range. Right, but I wasn't totally sure because it was like hard to watch both things at once until uh, until Will announced that I was the winner, and it was. And I, I, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, that has got to be. I would. I would assume that sort. That's got to be up there with 2005, right? Because now we're back. Um, it it wasn't. A, it, it was because it was just such a long drought, right? But there was still a thing in the back of my mind, like, well, this is an online tournament, right? This was that different. Was, sure. You're going to go back to Stanford next year. And it's going to be, you know, more of the same. You're going to be good, but not quite good enough. How'd that go? Uh, well, turns out uh, I won. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was the sort of thing where, like. All day, I just kept kind of waiting. I'm like, something at some point is going to happen. Like, I'm not going to make a mistake necessarily, but something's going to happen where, like, I'll just kind of fade out of contention. Like, there'll, there'll be people who are faster than I am, like a minute here, minute there. And that really didn't happen. It was actually the point where I could actually play the seventh puzzle, uh, the, the Sunday morning one, fairly conservatively. Like, I, I could take an extra minute, and I still couldn't be caught for third place. Because all that matters is getting top three. Like, you just want to be on the stage. Sure, yeah. Like, I'm not going to, like go guns blazing for second place and then make a mistake and crash out of it completely. That'd be very, very foolish. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to, you know, if I, if I get past for a second, I land the third, fine. Just get me into the final. And, um, yeah. And that's, so I get up in the final, I'm like, you know, Dan's there. Um, uh, David's there. I'm like, I hear, you know, these two guys, you know, David really easily could have won last year. Dan's crushed me a number of times. Is there um, an intimidation factor when you see Dan up there, by the way? I mean, I think there has to be just as he's done it before. Right. So many times. I mean, so have I, but head to head, head to head, I'd never beaten him on stage. Right. So um, that's, so then of course, then before this happens, there has to be just natural whether you want, you know. Yeah. It's like, okay, well, you know, I mean, there wasn't the back of my mind. Well, one time you did beat you actually the year I lost by like half a second that year he had a head start on me because it's like points based. It's a points based system. Right. So like the people in first and second get like a head start. It's like, it's not much, but it's like one second per 10 points or something like that. Obviously it's enough. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like a two, he, he was up on me by 25 points. We got a two and a half second advantage and I lost by one second. So do the math. Yeah. Um, no, I'm not good with numbers. Go on. Yeah, we know. But, um, so I, I, I like if I, if I, I'm not the most optimistic guy in the world in general. No. Like if I were, if, if I had like somebody to cling to like, it was that like you did do, you did do the puzzle faster than him once. Right. You know, didn't you know work out in your favor, but so I'm like, okay, let's just let's just do this, see yeah. how it works out. And like, I'm you know I'm going pr- I'm going through the puzzle pretty good, and you know it it feels good. And like every time I'm like having to erase something or write over something, I'm just like, ah, oh, that, that that could be the mistake that you know that could be the little misstep, the little time cost that you know cost me this thing. And I know better than anyone, any second, no matter how well you feel you're doing, any second could be the one or the other guy raises his hand and and you're out. Right. Um. Is there a little bit of gazing over, by the way, when you're in the finals? You can kind of see, like, this past year, like, 
at one point, like I saw, I like, cause I'm on the right, Dan's in the center and I see him step away. I kind of hear like a rumbling behind me, which means people are applauding. So like, okay, I look, and I, I kind of take another look over cause the boards are angled. It's like that, that, and that. Right. So you can't, you can't really see another person's board unless you're really going, uh. Yeah. Um, so I, I just kind of look over and I see Dan and Powell off the side. I'm like, okay, they're done. And I, so I took like an extra minute just because I was like, I'm last. I might as well make sure it's right just in case they messed up. So I'm just like standing back. Like I stared at my completed grid for like a minute, just not changing anything, which I would never do if they were still going. Yeah, of course. Um, Because if they made a mistake and, you know, I want to make sure I have it right just in case I'm there to pick it up. Didn't happen, obviously. But sure. um, so back to 2022. Um, I'm just, I'm just going, I'm in the last corner. I've read every clue. Like I don't want to screw up like I did last year and I'm reading the last clue and I write in the letter and I look at the across and and the letter was a Y. I forget what the, I forget what the, what word I finished, but I looked across and I finished the word army did not look at the clue. Like it's a word this time. (laughs) We're going to hope for the best. And I, um, I raised my, raised my hand and, and I see a lot of like thumbs up and things like that. And I remember because it was very nervous, like turning, like saying done and turning around. Cause I remember that year when I made that really dumb mistake and like yeah, expecting applause it. and just seeing, Oh, oh God, no. Um, so like turning around, just almost wincing, just like, did, did this just happen? Done. And, maybe done. And, uh, yeah, I see, uh, you know, I see, you know, positive signs and, you know, I take my head, uh, headset, headset off and, um, I kind of sit down on the floor, just kind of like, and let the adrenaline kind of fade away. And, you know, there's one judge who's like, you know, looking over my grid with his, with the solution in hand. And my eyes are just boring a hole in him. So like, he's probably not going to find anything because while people are watching, they would have noticed if I'd made a mistake during. Right. Um, but I'm just like, please Christ, don't find anything. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he didn't, I was right. And uh, I'd finally uh, gotten back to the top. So, I mean, 05 was, you know, I mean, you, you can't beat 05, but honestly, I think 2022 is, is number two, just because I, I didn't think it was going to happen again. So another thing we have in common, not me, not nearly as much as you do. I'm a, I'm a, I considered myself a big Weird Al fan until I met you. Yeah. But you have a special affinity for Weird Al Yankovic, right? Oh yeah, I mean, I'd say he's probably like the only musician I listened to until like senior year of high school. I was, yeah. I did not branch out for a long time. There were so many of his of of his songs. There were so many songs that I didn't know the actual version of the song. Oh, yeah. All I knew was this person is copying Weird Al or like, you know, I didn't even know they, <laughs> there was an actual song beforehand, which I think is just hilarious. Now um, he's gotten so many accolades from so many musicians who have said either, you know, I knew I'd made it when Weird Al did my song. Yeah, or the song honestly, really I think Dave Grohl said that. I think Dave Grohl said that. I know Chameleonaire in terms of Ride and Dirty said my song would have never been what it was if not for White and Nerdy. There's there, I, we can point to a lot of a lot on that front, but over the years, Again, I I can't. How many times have you gone to see him? It's it's a ridiculous number, right? Oh, it's it's, it's not that high, all considered. But um, I don't know. I'd, I'd have to look, but maybe I don't know, four, five, six times, somewhere in there. Oh, I thought we were way higher than that. Okay, no, I'm, no, I'm it's not not that many. But oh, um, so you're not even a fan. I got it. Okay. I'm not. Even, yeah, <laughs> weird Al, did you say? <laughs> yeah, weird Alfred, something like that. Yeah, yeah. I I I just went to see Emo Phillips and then I left. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. All right, back on a serious note. What is what, what's Tyler Hemming actually doing today? We mentioned I, I've hung out with you before. We've taken flights before. Well, let's just pretend it's a two-hour flight. Yep. You're actually doing puzzles the entire time. You said you don't train as much now. So what do we do today? In, in terms of puzzles, in terms of life, what are we doing? Um, I mean, I'm in, I'm in San Francisco, so obviously I'm a software engineer. Uh, had a few jobs over the last few years. I started a new one. Uh in uh pretty much the beginning of the year first work day of the year is my first day um the company called uh pomelo we do uh international uh money transfer person to person kind of helping people out with that because we can do it in a way that's using the credit system which does not charge you know the exorbitant fees that a lot of existing methods do right so yeah it's uh it's a good time and you do not regularly but i do see you on the twitch machine every now and then right yeah i am the picture of inconsistency with that. Cause a lot of the time I just, I mean, I haven't done it in a couple of weeks at least, right. but yeah, I'll just get on there and I was like, Hey, I'm going to do some puzzles tonight. And I will just sit there and do puzzles and whoever wants to tune in for whatever reason can. Well, I'll get you out of here on that, man. I, you can find him on Twitch at that puzzle guy. You can find him on Twitter at that puzzle guy. Do you have any other names or is it all that? Uh, it's pretty much that puzzle guy for pretty much everything. Um, Twitter and Twitch are really the only ones I use, but I have it on pretty much everything else. 
All don't right, bother following me on Instagram. I don't post. I don't do anything. I lied because I won't get you out on that. I'll get you out on this. When's our next trip, buddy? When is our next trip? I mean, we'll we'll have to figure that out. We got we got to hit a new city. We wanted to. I remember when we were looking at the hockey schedule, we were going to try and make Seattle happen. Uh, that's yeah. been a couple of years now. We never did, but hopefully now that things because well, this was this was back when things were still shut down. So yep. now that things are are open back up pretty much everywhere, yeah. we'll we'll have to plan something soon. You know, they have still got the new team smell on them, so there's they're real plus, you know, they they made the playoffs this year. I went to their second ever home game, funnily yeah. enough. Yeah, and, but the, right here the tickets are pretty expensive, but yes, um, they, we'll, they, we'll, they we'll are plus out. at the time they had uh, like I think half of their jumbotron wasn't working, which was kind of funny. It was almost like when your television was broken growing up and you had that like oh, yeah. black hole or whatever. So in fairness, I once went to a sharks game where like one screen of the jumbotron was out for an entire period so yeah but that arena, can happen even to the established teams that arena's got an old feel to it anyway even though i don't dislike the shark tank it's just i don't know that's a different yeah. one seattle was nice though it is what it is maybe yeah. that'll be the play maybe it'll be another play either way i'm sure we'll have yeah. fun and i hope that's you had fun, <laughs> right and i hope you had fun today watching yeah, thanks absolutely. for joining um this real domino pod is just getting started and i can't do it without you so if you see this please do me a favor if you liked it and even if you didn't please just throw me a like anyway uh, share, subscribe, tell a friend, all that good stuff. Tyler's got many more followers than me, so I know he'll share it, and then we'll get at least we'll get at least three viewers, right? Most yeah. of whom are probably disappointed more often than not, but it's all about the numbers. So yeah, exactly, and those are our best <laughs> fans anyway. We come here to be disappointed. Now we've had absolutely. a great time. Hey man, thanks a lot for doing this. I appreciate it. Um, Always a really pleasure. Chris. Yeah, absolutely, buddy. So thanks all. I hope to see you soon next time. And uh, and that's all I got. You got anything else before we wrap it up? Uh, stay in school. Well done. Cheers, guys. See you guys later.